Hello everyone and welcome to the Monster Sanctuary Tournament Circuit Grand Finals of the Draft Tournament, Tournament number 4. I am GameSlayer989, joined by Red Sailor Red. Hey everyone, very excited to be casting the final here. This final will be between Joker, who will be on the left, and Flowing Jaffawop, who will be on the right. So, two very different teams, two very strong teams also. One that's focusing on uh, debuffs and uh, revive on Joker's side. And on Jeff Flowing Jaffawop's side, we have a charge base team. Mm -hmm. Leading off Flowing Jaffawop with this Targo Oculus start here, going to be providing an absolute ton of charged acts to this spinner. And spinner, of course, has Killing Dance. Now, what Killing Dance does is when you kill a monster, then you get the uh, then you get the charge acts back as a refund here. Um, and he has going to be going for the round two. Gonna see if he can try and get a kill off immediately here. Meanwhile, Crystal Snail stole the Fazuki. This have we seen this lead before in the tournament for Joker? I don't think so. It's very interesting though. Uh, um, I think uh, maybe he might be focusing here on the poison debuffs. Since uh, we have Crystal Snail, Crystal Snail and Stolby who have uh, um, a multi-poison aura and very close <laughs> to killing the Stolby here. Super so close. close. Was it so far? As he's gonna heal right back up again now. Oh, that was that was really close to an instant kill here. And those, those poison debuffs that you were talking about would not matter because that would be the end of that. Um, yeah. That'd be the end of that plan here. And, um, uh, the. Um, the Solby is a very important part to, uh, you know, the poison synergies with uh, with corrosion, uh, doing more damage. Uh, the debuffs are going to do more damage if the monsters have armor break. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Twenty percent more if the enemy has armor break, which is the equivalent of fatal upkeep um, or destructive upkeep or something like that. Uh, as oh oh sticky web oh oh okay yeah nope that's all be down now there yep. we go uh, but now of course you, you pivot straight into Rackleck now Rackleck is really scary for Joker because he has this thing called blood drive and blood drive means that 75% of the time when an enemy takes a debuff damage they get a bleed stack equal to the debuff damage taken so 70 so you can think of it as a 75% damage buff for all debuffs. Except that yeah. this is bleed, and it yeah. comes in on the next turn, which is Rackley. really important because Oculus can remove bleed stacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That said, that's a lot of stacks already applied, that's and it. Oculus can remove four in total, and those wound stacks are going to be taking the place of some of those bleeds that would otherwise be removed. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, Arachnid is a very scary, important, scary monster. Uh, Jeffawak really needs. I think to focus uh, focus that monster, but it's, it's gonna be hard with the uh, protect from the, the snail and uh, the whole team has full shield uh, now. So we'll see. And, and we're seeing this uh, this spinner does not quite have mana right now. This uh, hmm. this chill is a serious problem. Rackley bringing in the multi chill here, and when chill is applied, I mean that's twenty percent of your ma of your mana regeneration is just gone. And for a mana-hungry uh, attacker-like spinner, that is very significant here. As you're looking at a very healthy team for Joker. Full shields, full health, everything. Is he looking potentially for a kill here with this shield burst? Shield burst gets thrown onto the Targo because Targo is protecting. That's looking like maybe even a kill on Targo, though, with Gemstone Rain being super effective on this Crystal Snail. Uh, yeah, it's looking good on Targo here. here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's got that five bleed stacks as well. That said, it's also really high damage on that spinner. If he uh, crits going... there, it might get a kill. Oh, uh, yeah, nope, no crit at all. Um, he doesn't have glory, and I didn't see any crits. He might only have the base chance to uh, to crit uh, yeah. if he's built like that. Um, it's true that the the crit uh, build is more for the dark shift with the crystal snail. Mm. Mm, absolutely. Who has the, well. Um, uh, Kill didn't sorry. happen, unfortunately yeah. for him there. Um, but what is so something that's actually really interesting though about Crystal Snail is that he Crystal Snail is also a protector, right? It shields up, it protects, mm. it defends the team, and Spinner doesn't actually have a super effective attack against it. it. Has a lot of Spinner has a lot of coverage in general, but it's it's 
weak to ice and sorry to water and air, right? And Spinner doesn't have those attacks that are magical because I believe it's resistant to physical attacks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So get it. So when things are protected by this crystal snail, Spinner actually has a really hard time killing stuff, which is surprising mm. since Spinner is such a massive glass cannon usually. That said, well, I was going to say that said, there isn't a ton of pressure applied to the spinner. Spinner usually dies on the first turn or second turn it comes out. And he has managed to survive for a very long time, but there is pressure Not actually. Enough. It's in these shields that get thrown. Oh. Yeah, Thargard goes down here, so look like looks like uh, Joker's making progress here, getting rid of one very important support for uh, Jeff Webb. Now, the spinner was unshifted, so that means it was a grey pearl spinner. So spinners, yes. which is very common for spinners, because that gives them a lot of extra health uh, and some and better crit chance as well. But mm -hmm. I would be interested in seeing potentially a dark shifted spinner come out, actually, because um, dark shifted spinner has bleed out, and if mm -hmm. you're not going to take, if you if it's going to take you a while to die, then maybe you could apply enough bleed stacks. That might be the way of getting through Crystal Snail. Yeah, interesting. Even though uh, you know Jeff Webb's team is not focused on bleed stacks, just the spinner alone can uh, you know can uh, wear down the opposing monster attacking repeatedly and uh, applying these uh, bleed stack. If, like you said, he uh, he decides to switch with uh, dark shift. Next, there we go. Ooh, oh, go close here. Oh, why? Oof. Very, very close there, but you're not looking at some great heals there. So I think this this definitely says that the snail is uh, is is a, a health based snail with how little <laughs> that health bar has moved. Yeah, that that snail is super tanky. I mean, he must he must have very you know uh, very high numbers of health and defense. Absolutely, as the uh, the. The Oculus now taking quite a lot. Ooh, that is a lot of damage there on that Oculus. This Oculus is looking like it's going to die. It does not have very much mana left either. Um, and then that will mean that uh, Joker has got ahead in this game in terms of monsters. Healing Wave coming out. So that heals a good amount, but Healing Wave... Um, the way Purify works is that when it's a multi-target heal, it's only going to remove two stacks. When it's a single target, it's going to remove four stacks. So it didn't quite remove all of the bleed stacks from Spinner there, and it didn't remove very many of the bleed stacks from Oculus either. Um, Restore will remove some of those debuffs, though. For sure. We'll see now if uh, that Spinner can get a kill. Oh, it was so unlucky, though. The, spinner, the one debuff Spinner still has is the weakness. <laughs> oh yeah, that's you're right. The, the one thing it still has is weakness, which reduces the damage dealt by Spinner significantly. Was yeah, it 20%? 20 yeah. 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 Uh, which might be what you need to get this kill, because Spinner really likes... So Spinner can definitely bleed, like I was talking about the bleed build. Spinner can definitely bleed, but what it really wants to do is kill with killing. Wow. Well, there you go. Snail goes down. Two tries. Just takes him two tries. It's not super Almost effective, two, so... 2k bleed, uh, bleed damage here, so getting mm. rid of the snail. But uh, now we see the... The notorious duo of uh, Aklit Araklik, that uh, really, really scary duo that can put a lot of pressure with uh, bleed out and blood drive combined. Uh, mm -hmm. So the bleed stack from blood drive are gonna stay uh, there. So it's uh, it's a very, very strong setup to be, uh, you know, uh, to. to uh... And and you should know because you ran this right. That's in your third <laughs> yeah. place. That that was my my uh, plan for the you know the, the end game. If if I if my monsters uh, were all dead, then I, I'd bring uh, the Aklet. But now we see that uh, Joker's keeping that Goblin Pilot uh, in the back line. Maybe there's a reason he wants to bring uh, the Aklet first. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because Aklet also has revive, and Aklet yeah. has revives as a uh, necromancy. Uh, so that means that all of the revives would revive for an extra 30% health, 30% uh, of the max health. So typically you'd see Aklik come in last uh, to then to then start the revive chains going, right? Or Aklik revives Aklik, which then revives something else potentially. Yeah, but there he goes, goes down straight away, boom. Yeah, Jeff Wops recognized that he needs to kill that Aklik, uh, needs to get gotta, rid of bleed out. Gotta got stop it. that bleed before it starts, really. Yeah. Right, so now, uh, 
Choker might try to finish off that spinner because with Infinity Steely Stack uh, it's gonna do a lot of damage. But I don't know if it can get the kill here. Oh, wow. Okay, again, bleed stacks, eight bleed stacks are enough to uh, to put down the spinner. Now the Ninky Nanka's coming in. We'll see if uh, we can find enough damage to get through mm -hmm. Heraklish or Violet. It, because it is one of the highest damage monsters in the game, to be honest, if it gets enough buffs on it. Because Ninky Nanka works really, really well with buffs. Scorch is going to mm. be a buffs. The question will be, can it do enough Because Nikki Nakata usually takes a bit of time to get set up yeah. here. Yeah, needs to build up enough buffs to uh, to benefit of, from the... Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tsunami comes out, though, after wow. that Goblin Pile gets hit, and there we go. Okay, so it was killed with an AoE attack, which is really nice, because that means this Araklik isn't full health for the next attack. That said, didn't kill Araklik, so a revive comes out. Still, still pretty nice to get rid of uh, the infinity stacks. It's one way to uh, one way to uh, to win through the the revive setup. If you can, you know, kill the uh, damage dealer consistently, then you get rid of the infinity stack and you can wait until you get enough damage to, you know, maybe uh, wipe with an AOE or get mm -hmm. get two kills with maybe the Potter of and then the Ninkinaka. It's also worth noting, Araklix Phoenix Affinity hasn't been broken yet. Phoenix Affinity, of course, is a yeah, free revive for one time you would die. Um, so that needs breaking first before you can get a clean kill on Araklix. Um, yeah, that's... And he might have felt that if he had, didn't kill Goblin Pile that turn, he was not surviving. Mm -hmm. Well, you still need to at least uh, break yeah. through some of that shield. because uh, Didn't because kill the that... Basuki with the turn 2 attack from... Uh, Okay, yeah. you, you've got to imagine that a turn 3 attack would have killed, let you build up some more combo with that Polteroffin. Um, but Polteroffin's going for an AoE attack, hits Heraklik, does a good mm. amount of damage here. Will there burns be in? No, nope, burns are not enough to go for some kills here. Um, Close, but not enough. That said, they're looking pretty healthy, right? They're, I've seen them taking more damage than they currently are. Um, yeah. they, they were on lower health now. They've, they've gained some, quite some significant health off of that. Uh, Scorch, a fantastic healer with... Uh, with that healing um, healing crit effects there. But uh, that is a very good lightning flash. It's a very good lightning flash. Not a great fireball storm though. Only level one. Scorch only weak Scorch is weak to fire, but only level one on that goblin pilot. But I mean I wonder that it's gonna flash. be enough. Maybe and then he needs to go on for a scorch. Okay, good damage, good damage. Will the bleeds and stuff be enough? Yeah, wow. okay, okay, there we go. That is enough. Scorch is down. Scorch had revive on Jeff Wop's side, but no longer because Scorch is dead. The other two can be killed with um, relish. <laughs> yeah, very interesting here that Jokers kind of knew that uh, the debuffs and the bleeds were enough to, to kill through Scorch. He he chose to play a bit greedy to and heal heal the the uh, Arachnid healed uh, himself instead of putting charge sack on the the pilot. So it's kind of, you know, it's it's sometimes very hard with these debuff teams to uh, to uh, you know approximate, evaluate uh, if if the debuffs and the bleeds are going to be enough to kill or not. And Joker here managed yeah, to get it right. And they do so much damage when you least expect it, because of course those yeah. bleed stacks are a representation of all of the damage Joker does on the previous turn. Right. Yeah. Because all of his damage is in debuffs. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. So, so you've got to expect that he does almost double damage to what you would expect uh, normally. Fireball Storm coming out, doing the finishing blow on this Nikki. Porter often versus the world. Can he do it? 1v3! 1v3! <laughs> yeah, it's gonna Ow. be out from here. We'll see. Maybe... I mean, you might be able to break some of that shield of Heraklik. Heraklik has a lot of burn on him. Um, and yeah. there's still a Phoenix Affinity, though. Yeah. Um... Not looking fantastic. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, no, it doesn't even That's, break the shields. Mass restore. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Jobobs might be thinking of uh, his next move. If there's one thing that uh, he showed me in the semi finals, is that he, he really can can uh, adjust his team and, you know, tweak everything for the matchup. So we'll see if he can uh, make some changes in game two. Yeah, try and break through that crystal snail this time around. Um, as we see, 
The Salah Hammer has replaced the Spinner, it looks like. That is the only change hmm. here. And uh, it looks like Joker's gonna be running the same uh, starting lineup. Mm -hmm. So, Salah Hammer is interesting, and he's running with Nikki at the start, so this is interesting because Salah Hammer provides a lot of buffs to Nikki, right? So maybe the idea is that, you know, Spinner wasn't taking much damage for a long time, so maybe you can just sit back, be a bit slow, be a bit healy, throw out these antidotes, and Nikki will eventually get enough buffs that he will break through eventually. Yeah, I like uh, I like that plan. Uh, that plan it might be yeah might be a, a good uh, good strategy to uh, like you said kind of snow snowball uh, out of control with uh, Ninki Danka. <laughs> um, worth noting, it looks like that Stolby has slime skin because that was a weakness that was applied to Nikki there. Um, mm. And the problem with slime skin is that the weakness gets applied before the damage is yeah. dealt. So that Nikki survived. Uh, sorry, that uh, Stolby survived, but without that proc of the weakness, it was dead. So Juffop has to be a bit annoyed about that. Yeah, it, it was uh, probably dead, like you said, yeah. Yeah, um, interesting as well that Salahammer is um, light shifted here. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Typically, I see Dodge. Jeff Watt told me once that uh, I, I've seen uh, say you've been saying once that uh, the dark shifted is you know more for uh, like a fast uh, fast burst of damage you know far, fast start up and the light shift is more for a uh, you know longer game and that's a lot more appropriate here against Joker. So the light shift of Salahammer is that it gets to apply an additional stack of any buffs that it applies. Yes. Um, so you get that extra limit, right? So instead of one glory stack, you have a limit of two, for example, uh, if you don't have any multi-glories on you, which can be very effective if you've got a way of applying basically every buff in the game um, with, a with a monster. Yeah. Um, There's more healing coming out of this uh, this Joker here, going for the Protects again, just... He's playing it very defensively, very safe, very calmly, with the expectation that he is... That Juffawop's saying, I'm going to go and spiral out of control with this Nikki, and then Joker's saying, bet. Yeah. I'm going to do the exact same thing and just go out of control with my debuffs. Yeah, it really reminds me of uh, my matchup against uh, Juffawop. I was... We were both, uh, you know, trying to stall out and see... Uh, see uh, if we could uh, you know stall each other out or either uh, with either ch charge stacks on the Jeff Wop side and me with uh, debuffs and that's that's similar here <laughs> yeah absolutely although <laughs> might not even need to get to infinity with how many buffs are being applied to this Nikki right now we've got three sidekicks here uh, Aquablast coming in, gonna go hit in the snail. One weakness he does have is that, uh, yet again, Nikki has no super effective attack against this crystal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the snail is gonna protect the team every time, so uh, mm -hmm. Jeff Wobb's gonna need to attack with the Salamer, but uh, it looks like he also needs to use a uh, potion like Antidotes to uh, keep his team safe from debuffs. <laughs> the snail so we know that the snail has a ton of health and the way this game works yeah. is that you get is that your maximum shield Whoa. is equal to your maximum oh god yeah no i'm looking at the snail look at the other side of the screen oh whoa. the damage came through yeah i mean these debuffs really are starting to kick in we saw six poisons on the ninki nanka now four and like five on each support so um, Jeff Webb's having a hard time to keep up with uh, all these debuffs here. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So this is one of the real problems of running Targo on the front line and not the Oculus, is that you don't have any good healing for this uh, for this Nikki now. Um, the idea was that it would eventually spiral out of control, but if the damage through shield is enough, then it doesn't matter how much you're spiraling, because you will die eventually. You've got no way of healing yourself other than potions. Um, mm. This protect from Targo isn't gonna matter if uh, it just dies to all the debuffs. Yeah, and we saw uh, not not even able to touch uh, Vasuki's health here. So kind of. Yep, there he goes, goes down, and that was that was the big thing Joff was was building on, the thing he was relying mm. on. I'm looking at the rest of his team. So typically in Monster Sanctuary, you've got three da you bring in three damage and three mm -hmm. and three supports. Joffwop has brought two damage dealers. 
And one of them's now dead, because the only other one really is Poltroffin, because you've got Scorch as a healer, and this Oculus, I mean, unless yeah. it's the legendary damage dealing Oculus. <laughs> Which they, they do exist. They are scary. I mean, I'm, I've never seen one, but uh, I must say that I once got wiped out by uh, like two uh, 200 charge stacks of uh, <laughs> Oculus <laughs> doing sticky threads to my team. But uh, uh, here, like you said, it's. Usually, if you bring a debuff team, you don't really need to have that split of uh, three, three uh, supports, three damage dealers. But uh, with the charge based teams that is looking to, you know, kill with attacks, usually you need to bring uh, that's three three splits. Mm -hmm. It's worth it's worth noting that one of the yeah one of the core strengths of a lot of debuff teams is that hexing rod, which is a weapon that whenever you make an attack that doesn't mm -hmm. attack the opponent. Right? You can apply debuffs, but Sony's not an actual attack. Um, the opponent just gets two debuffs on their mons. Yes. And so, like, if, if you just have... We see this a lot in debuff teams. If you just have three mons that all have a hexing rod on them on the <laughs> front line, this Crystal Snail is working for a debuff team, despite the yeah. fact that they have no debuff support on their own. And yeah, I'm betting... I'm betting a... a good... Uh, you know, I, I can bet a lot on uh, Jokers having three hexing rods uh, on these monsters right now. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and that, and that's the thing, right? With all the hexing rods, all of the, you get all of the damage. They're all DPS monsters. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely saw the with my team also the the power of the hexing rod, the uh, able uh, being able to apply two debuff passively. It's it's a very big game. He breaks. Yeah. He's breaking the. He's break. He's finally doing an attack. He's breaking the. Uh, the defense there to go for yeah, an attack on here. Doesn't break doesn't even break shield, but that might have been his intention, right? Because Polterothan's ability yeah. is that he throws the shield. He has volatile shield. So just keep him off volatile shield, keep his shields down, and mm. the damage output of this team is very low. I mean Salahammer's getting up there on on stacks. He's at 71, but he's also looking like he's almost dead. Yeah. Mega Potion heals for a tiny amount because of all of the wound stacks that's been applied. Um, wound removes, wound reduces the amount of healing of the next healing action on the monster. Um, and with four of those, he's got a Mega Potion four more times if he wants to do some proper healing. Yeah, maybe uh, Jeffro clicked a bit too fast on that potion and didn't realize uh, all these wounds. Or maybe he wanted to get rid of, the, of them first and then he can use a potion for uh, next round. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then again, they're all gone now. Yeah. I don't know how they all disappeared. Well, once, now, though. once you heal, once you heal uh, your monster, they're they're gonna disappear after after the round. Oh, okay. They all disappear. All right. Yeah. But still, you have to waste uh, a turn to make them go away. But and then they're just coming back afterwards with the with the debuffs, with all the debuffs you have. So it's. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. That's it. I mean, six barrier on this uh, Sar Hammer. Uh, four regen stacks as well. That's probably the only reason why I survived here with these four regen stacks. Do we know? Does barrier reduce the damage of debuffs? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I would think that maybe it works against some debuffs. Uh, maybe burn because it does direct damage, but poison. As a percentage of health, so mm. I, I don't know. I I still would have to. Uh, that said, to poison does get reduced by resistances, you know, and right. It does say so. Barrier does just say takes twenty percent less damage. So maybe I've, I've never noticed before though, but it might be relevant here because he is still living. He's still yeah. alive. As we're Summer. into double infinity now. Barely holding on here, but Joke is just sitting here, super happy. His monsters have double mana; they're all <laughs> fine. He's got full shields. He's everything. That shield on Crystal Snail is absolutely huge because his health bar is huge, and you have shield equal to your max health. That's your max shield bar. And he's and... at eight age stacks right now, so that is a twenty-four percent damage reduction. How are you breaking through this? Yeah, and you know it—it's kind of nice to see. Uh... Crystal Snail and, you know, Stolby. Uh, this lineup doesn't scare, it seems very scary at first, but uh, now we really can see the the power of so many poisons. Uh, Poor Antidos, he's just trying to get rid of as much as he can. He hits everything yeah. except the poison. 
Um, so that means burn's gonna be reapplied. There we go. <laughs> Chill being applied. Yeah, yeah. All right, more poison bomb. Okay, so poison bomb goes. So that means that the the defense is no longer there. Snowbell comes in. It's only level mm -hmm. two, but it still does some good damage. And that's the Saw Hammer dead. And the uh, oof. Yeah, no, they're looking low. Oculus comes in now, though. Oculus yeah, maybe, is a healer. Maybe Oculus can save the can save the day. It, it, it can also applies a lot of charge stacks and then. Also so shield large. on the the Polterofen, so yeah, maybe, yeah, we're uh, looking. That's forty charge stacks to that Polterofen immediately. That's yeah. how you break off out of age, um, right there. Um, the question is though, is this enough for a kill on this Polterofen? He hasn't snapped. He hasn't snap fired, so maybe it's not. Maybe he's looking what he's got to do here. Yeah, it has one hundred sixty-five charge stack and two infinity stack. I'm pretty sure it can three kill his killing blow. Oh. Yeah. 37,903 <laughs> yeah. damage to that crit. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's what I thought. But I mean, maybe he was thinking of uh, keeping the shield because now the Polterofen is so low. So uh, Ooh, yeah, it's, it's for sure gonna be and down. only one regen as well. Yeah, no, this is uh, this is looking real dead for this Polterofen because uh, that's still a lot of Debo supplied. Mm -hmm. um, Goblin Pilot looking through its options here. Thunderstorms, they're looking like good damage on this Oculus. All right, so it doesn't. Oh wow, there's actually a lot of healing on this Paltrow, but it's oh, not going to yeah. be enough. Maybe that Thunderstorm was enough. What's going to close though? Hey, we have tax, of course, aren't removed with Targo's, uh, aren't, aren't, sorry. Targo can't defend the team against, <laughs> against uh, okay. multi-area AoE attacks. Yeah. Single target only, and now you're in the worst spot in the world. Yeah, you've got three supports. I mean, you know, I've seen uh, Targo uh, even even with 300 uh, stacks, uh, <laughs> not doing so much damage, so I'm not sure yep. how uh, Jeff Wop's gonna be able to come back from this. But you've got so much healing, we're going to Infinity 99, boys! <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it's Infinity 99, can you imagine? Uh, but that Fireball Storm <laughs> looks like it's about it, it could kill Scorch, so all he has to do next round is just hit the target, get rid of that Scorch, and then, uh, then that'll be a kill. Yeah. No. But Aurora Shield, you're not letting it happen. He's not letting it happen without a fight. He is going for that 99 Infinity Stacks. I mean, with with this, this Scorch too, it, you can now remove a lot, uh, lots of the debuffs every turn, but uh, the pilot's gonna be able to get a kill uh, for sure. Okay. New plan, DPS go. <laughs> <laughs> Just run this team, but... Just run this lineup, but somehow also do damage. That's all you need to do. <laughs> ah, Fireball Storm. There we go. That looks like a kill. Boom. There we go. Yeah. 13,000 damage. Just real casual with six infinity there. Um, and that's just Targo Oculus. You know, the S tier draft monsters staying around to the very end. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that uh, these two are, are still there for the game. I wonder now if... Uh, if uh, Jafwa might think to uh, bring the Oculus earlier this time. Um, yeah, definitely got to change the strategy because this clearly didn't work out. You've still got five months on the Joker's side. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. Spino was doing pretty well in comparison because he could actually kill the snail. It took two turns, but he could actually do it. Mm -hmm. He never got that chance. Be interesting to see how he pivots here. The, uh, uh, the Polterofen first could be an option too. Maybe oh, uh he's missing the volatile shield there. Oh yeah. I mean I understand it's the it's the finals, no no reason to concede, but uh oh, absolutely yeah, it's not. looking tough here. Yeah, no, it's tough, but yeah, nah. It was a show. Yeah. <laughs> Heal up. <laughs> Remove that weakness. That's that's the one thing holding you back was that weakness. <laughs> okay, he's looking, he's looking around, he's like, Poison Eater, mm, doesn't do damage, Poison Bob, yeah, doesn't exactly. do damage, uh, <laughs> you know. Oh, the, the, the Vasuki finally going for it. Vasuki finally using up all those, like, all, all those attacks. Alright, and another one. one. Alright, just Targo, and Targo will fall very soon. Healed up and then instantly got attacked again. Went back down to Northern. Alright, he forfeited, there we go. Victory, a lot of loot there, a lot of loot there. Yeah, alright, so two 
O or Joker here. We'll see if. Uh... All right, he's brought back the spinner. He's going with. Yeah. He's going with number one. He's going with the the first the first plan here, as uh, we see the first plan again from Joker here. And yeah, so yeah, Ocul Oculus and Spinner back back to uh, game one. I think that was the same start yep, from him. This is the, this is definitely game one. The difference is Joffup goes first this time, which maybe he can get a kill with. No, he went first last time. He went for the kill on Stolby, but didn't quite make it out. Or am I thinking of game two? Regardless, he could instead opt to try for some more charge attacks with his Oculus Targo. Yeah. Um, Maybe now he can get a bit just more lucky, a bit lucky on the... Yeah. No, all right. He's just going to go. He's going to apply all of the charge attacks mm -hmm. he can, um, except that the debuffs are going to come through. Um, and I presume go for some go for a kill on the snail, but uh, the Stolby is left open. Interesting that uh, Joker is deciding to protect the, the Suki. Maybe he wants to. Uh, he's thinking about Thrust Pierce. So. Mm, you know, yes, uh, Suki is Thrust weak Pierce, so. water. Yeah. Um, this is a but, lot of charge stacks on this uh, on this uh, spinner though. Thirty eight. And if yeah. the spinner does get a kill, the killing dance goes off, and then you start killing and killing and killing. Oh, and level the five freeze. He does have an attack that's effective. Wow. I forgot about freeze. Yeah. I guess nice. he just didn't level it last time, but he has now! Nice, nice. Alright, so... Doesn't get the killing dance off, unfortunately, but Crystal Snail is gone, and Crystal Snail was a huge problem for him last time. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like, he doesn't do it... He doesn't do it much, but it was always, you know, in the way with the Protect and... Uh... And, uh, you say slowly... it wasn't doing much. I, I say it was the anchor point. It was the linchpin of that of that team. It took, it let him just slow it slow the game down right until infinity stacks. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it definitely definitely was a uh, was a good part of the. And we saw game. what happened last time when you try and kill Stolby first. The Oracle comes out, and then you've got a real big problem. The Oracle mm. protected by Snail. Yeah. This time around, the Oracle won't be protected by the Snail, and I'm pretty certain that Fazuki doesn't have Taunt. Because I would have, I'm sure we would have seen a 25% proc by now. <laughs> yeah, interesting, interesting. Uh, for me, it would be crazy not to grab taunt, but uh... freeze comes out again. Good damage dealt. Yeah, freeze is good against a lot of his team actually. Mm -hmm. uh, full Getting restore, rid of the though. shield. So let's see. Getting rid of as much of the yeah. shield as possible. I mean, Goblin Pilot is still. He hasn't healed all the way back up. He's not going to be as effective as he was last time. So just mm -hmm. freeze, 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 freeze. Eventually work out. But that is two weaknesses. Uh, but he's not even broken through shields right here, right? The the damage mm -hmm. is not quite there yet for the debuff team. Yeah. Um, that said, a lot of the damage is going to be coming through fire, uh, through the burn effects on the spinner, right? Because spinner has a really high attack value. Um, there goes the weaknesses. Uh, this is going to be a full damage hit here. Um, uh, Goblin Pilot has full shield again, though. Still, still looks like this uh, spinner is uh, half as half uh, his mana, so maybe it's uh, it's not enough uh, here. That's what so he's typically in this situation for a charge team. You would go into like an antidote. Okay, he does. Yeah. Typically, you go into an antidote, but the question is, can you afford that? Because Goblin Pilot is going to have <laughs> a really big volatile shield attack off of this, and if he's he goes to the Master Restore. Okay, I was oh. gonna say, if he breaks, if he uses the Stolby to break the uh, spinner there. But no, he's just gonna kill the Targo, might as yeah. well. Targo goes down. Targo goes well, down, spinner at half. Well, he could totally have killed spinner, but he went for the Targo. Might be good here for Jafua because, uh, you know, Scorch is, uh, is really good at uh, cleansing these uh, debuffs, so. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't have the much shield anymore, though, right? Goblin Pilot. Ooh. has a really good chance of just running away with this game now that the shields aren't there. Um, okay. Unless down. he dies. Yeah. There you go. There's a killing dance. You're up to 49 now. Now you've got the ball rolling. The question is, can you survive for the next turn? As Aklut comes out. Well, interesting. Uh, here, Joker's deciding to uh, keep the Araclic for the hand. Until the hand, so... Mm-hmm. So Araclic, of course, as we've said before, has that necromancy. Um, so he's very, very good in an endgame situation. So I guess the question is, assuming Spinner can kill any of these, which one are you going to go for with Spinner here? Because whichever one you go for is the one he can't revive. 
I think you need to go for the Aklet for sure. Yeah. Mm, the Aklet because Aclet, the bleed yeah. out. Yeah, you don't you don't want that uh, Raklik uh, Aklet ending, so you really need to get rid of it before the Raklik comes down. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting that Akla and Stolby are both revive users, so either of them very effective there. There we go, another kill, more killing, uh, more killing um, dance, 54 yeah, no. now, 54 no. charge attacks. Yeah, we really can see now the uh, spinner going out of control here, it's nice. Mm -hmm. And you know, we know that that's, well we don't know anymore, but that spinner last time had sticky threads set up. So he, mm -hmm. he goes for an AoE attack with uh, its million charge attacks and gets the kills. But you're looking at half. That, no, this is just a dead spinner, though, right? Yeah, I think it's might be dead right there. That's gotta be. That is oh. so brutal. Oracle coming out and immediately oh. killing. Yeah, it's it's very impressive that uh, that it has the the damage to. Maybe mm -hmm. that's why he's keeping it for, uh, for the the last because maybe it's built a little more uh, more uh, on the damage side. But no, for witch shielders, you you need a lot of health. So hmm, interesting. Yeah, um, it is worth noting, of course, that um, Spinner is it is super effective against Spinner because it is a magic attack and Spinner is... Weak right, right. Magic. That's true, that's true. Um, uh, yeah, I, for, I kind of forget that, yeah. But then you could argue that if that was the only reason to bring Arachlick into the lake, maybe he could have just done that earlier. But you've got to... Yeah, I mean, he, he, I think he just wants Arachlick's necromancy available for the endgame scenario. Yes, and Arachlick yes. is, of course, his best... It's probably his best user for, for the uh, Infinity Stacks as a result. Yeah, that's true. Definitely. And now we saw in game two that Ninkineka didn't didn't quite have the damage to get it's through. It's so beautiful, though. I, I'm sorry. I just want to gush yeah. over this team a bit. It is so beautiful. The Stolby has Arcane Shield and Vasuki has mm -hmm. Fire Shield to just enable this Arachlic to do exactly what he's doing right now. Boom! Yeah. The damage dealt there. Um, not quite a kill this turn. Will almost certainly be a kill next turn. And wow. oh, oh, Oculus is down. Never mind. There was a kill this turn. Just wasn't that guy. And that goes to show just how Arachlish is just uh, so versatile, so powerful monster. Like it can, it can support, it can heal, it can shield, it can also do the, it can also deal massive damage with the uh, shield burst. And so, very uh, importantly, it doesn't have to lose on anything in order to do that, right? It can mm -hmm. be the shieldy, healthier person that will then just do the damage as well. Right. And with so much auras also, multi multi chill, congeal, blood drive, revive, it's just so so strong, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of teams in this game like just pick Arachlic and then they're able to just do something because they've got Arachlic. Yeah, pretty um, much what's my really nice my about team. Joker's team though is that it's just one component of his whole thing. We talk about how mm -hmm. amazing it is, but it's just one component. It's so beautiful. That's true, yeah. He didn't, he didn't even need to use it uh, in the last last uh, game, so... Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Stolby, Stolby just took it out of the park uh, with the snail. Well, Stolby, Snail, Vasuki. I mean, we're, we're ignoring Vasuki, but, you know, Vasuki has been here the whole time. He is the reason why fire, fire gets spread. Mm. Now he decides to go for a more uh, defensive approach because he, know, he knows that uh, the debuffs are going to take care of the rest. Yep, here. they will happen eventually, and... It's not easy to break through uh, to kill Stolby. If you kill Stolby, Arachlic can revive Stolby. If you go for Arachlic, that's Phoenix Affinity Pops, right? Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Scorch is healing himself. Oof. Not what you want to see when you got a Nikki uh, that low. Yeah. But I suppose maybe he's thinking I'll let the Nikki die, because even though I lose all my buffs, I do also lose all the debuffs. <laughs> oh, that's a thing, because... Uh, he Joker needs to kill the Scorch first, anyways, because mm -hmm. he has revived. So uh, uh, no need to uh, protect the Ninkinanka. If the Ninkinanka goes down, he can always revive. And, it. and he doesn't have anything that's particularly great um, for that either. Um, mm -hmm. The shield burst is it's neutrally effective. It's not it's not like the, he has the spinner here, um, mm -hmm. and the Scorch is going to be built very defensively, I would imagine. Shield burst so is close, but here. it's not quite there. But then with the debuffs, you get it. Yeah. And yeah. Wow. But yeah, no, this is uh, this is looking really, really bad for Joe Fob. We're back in the same situation as it was in game one, where the uh, Pol Polteroff and uh, and the DPS were unable to win the game on their own here. 
still still pretty close, you know. Um... Nope, never mind. Forfeit. That's there you go. There is our champion. Our grand champion, ladies and gentlemen, is Joker with a very unconventional but powerful debuff team, with the second place being Joffa Whoop. We can ignore third place, don't worry about him. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well done, Red though. Congratulations. Yeah, and uh, shout out to, also to Jago Moo in fourth place. Um, <laughs> you know, very very interesting tournament with uh, with very strong team, you know, for uh, for draft setup. You know, uh, we saw uh, Joker's very synergistic team and uh, Jeff Lops also with uh, with all the the charge stack synergies. We saw that that spinner going going off at the end, and uh, my team also with some uh, some pretty good synergies, even though uh, we we ran a, a draft. So. Uh, you know, Congratulations to all our team. Uh, join yeah. us next time for tournament number five, which is going to be Grid Draft, which is draft, which is kind of like draft, except it's quicker and it's going to be for every single round, I believe, is a new draft, is it not? Yeah, I'm also super excited for this one. Really, uh, really looking forward to uh, to play more games with uh, with everyone. 